Hello, hello. Uh, so we got this beautiful boy from um, Annie McDermott. She brought him down from Delta, Utah. Um, he is a coming four-year-old from Roberts Mountain, Nevada, HMA, which I haven't really experienced HMA before, um, but BLM seems to really like them. Uh, and uh, this is him. We got him from Annie in Las Vegas. Isidro did a few sessions with him there in Las Vegas. And then we brought him here to Arizona on our way to New York. And Isidro did um, a couple sessions with him. I think maybe only one in Arizona right here. Um, he still didn't really want to be touched by humans. So he's still just really working on touching him with stick and string and getting him not freaked out about the rope. Uh, he's not a striker or a kicker. He is a bolter. Okay, here is Atlas. We can start touching him. You can see where he, he reacts on everything. Okay, and here he is in um, his second week of training. So he made it all the way to New York. Poor guy had to go on the trailer and offload the trailer a couple of times. He did great. Um, and now he's in a stall and we kind of gave him a few days to just settle in and get used to being in a stall with a lot of activity going on. Um, you can see he's not so reactive to the rope anymore. Um, Isidro's done a lot of work with him um, throwing the rope. Um, he, like I said, he's never been a striker or a kicker or a biter or anything like that. He's just one that wants to run away. And Isidro said you can literally hear his heart beating when you go in there. He's just scared. And, and now you can see he's starting to um, accept touch, human touch. Uh, he's got a very sweet look in his eye. He's just one that's scared and wants to run away. Um, but he will be scared and run away to the point where um, he doesn't mind running over you or through you. So um, that's kind of his, his issue. Um, so getting horses like that kind of used to touch and used to following pressure. Uh, so that's why Isidro, in the, in the first videos, he did a lot of work on getting him um, to kind of understand that when that rope pulls on him, that he needs to stop uh, and follow that, that pressure. So he first did it free, and then he started using um, the side of the, the pipe crawl that was attached to a steady pole um, to kind of get him if he bolted off, because he's pretty strong uh, that, you know, he would learn to kind of come around to that pressure, and he used our, our um, no-choke safety lariat. Uh, you can actually order those. Um, I'll probably put a link in the comments or the bio or whatever the, the information on this, on this, um, oh, what do you call it? This video, um, to big loop horsemanship. They are authorized to make that, um, safety lariat for us right now. Uh, so you can order from them, um, but it's, so it doesn't choke them, but you can, um, kind of rope them. So BLM put the halter on him. We didn't put the halter on him. Um, and so Sitter's just now starting to teach him to be clipped and lead off of the halter. Uh, we do the neck first and then the halter. And see, he's coming around really nice. He's starting to, to trust. But it was really important that he knew not to blow through uh, that so that we don't want to reinforce the bolting. Um, you can see he's teaching him to kind of come off of that a little bit, which he, he should do because he understands the pressure on the neck. But he's still like pretty shy about it. Uh, so his name is Atlas Moon, and uh, he was named by his owner. We selected this horse for somebody that's um, in the Heart Mustang program, and um, we knew what she was looking for. And with the help of Annie, well, we, we were able to select this horse. And when he came, he was everything that we hoped he would be, and uh, super excited about him. And his owner got to see him in Las Vegas and fall in love with him. And so uh, she ended up naming him. So doesn't have our typical Spanish name, but uh, it's her horse, so she can name him. We're totally supportive and cool with that. Um, suits him. Um, he looks like your typical <laughs> Mustang spirit horse. Um, so really beautiful boy. Uh, you can see he's got a really sweet eye. We're super excited about him. And um, he's going to be coming out of this stall. The plan is to get him out of the stall next week. We do not like to leave horses in this in these stalls for a long period of time. We don't want them to feel like caged animals. Um, we don't have the setup that we do in Arizona, so we're kind of working with this setup. Um, and we find that if they're in the stall for no more than two weeks, uh, they tend to do pretty okay, especially when they're around a lot of activity and they can see the other horses. 
um, cause it's, it's like, a you know, like open grill or whatever on the side that you can't see right now. Uh, but longer than that, and they really just turn into these kind of stressed out caged animals. So our goal is to get them out of here as quickly as possible. Um, so this, uh, th this weekend we'll be moving the round pen, um, closer to the stall aisle so that we can get him into the round pen. And then once he's kind of leading and lunging well in the round pen, then he can start going to turn out. Um, so he can be with his friends and he can have, see other horses and he can kind of get some fresh air and freedom, um, and not turn into like a caged animal. So, um, I don't like the idea of keeping them in these stalls for a long period of time, um, I feel like it's not healthy for them mentally. Uh, so uh, that's, that's definitely something that we want to be pretty active on, doing whatever we need to do to get them leading um, and not bolting and okay with, um, you know, getting out so that we can get them out of these stalls. Um, very useful for in the short term, but definitely not the long term. Um, but you can kind of see that he's still, he's like, okay with touch on his forehead. Um, but he's still a little wary about touch on his side. Uh, and so you see that I was just doing a lot of, um, these sessions aren't long. This is his second session with him this day. Um, and cause we don't want to completely overwhelm his first sessions were pretty long in Las Vegas cause we really wanted to try to work on getting him to not bolt so much. Um, stopping these guys from bolting early on is really important. If they learn they can bolt, and if with any any little bit of pressure, they learn they can bolt, fixing that later on is hellacious. Like, it's so much stress on the horse. It's so much stress on the people. The risk of injuring the horse is significantly increased. So stopping, you know, any kind of thought of bolting early on is really important. And um, I don't believe... And I don't know, maybe 10 years from now, I'll change my mind. I don't know. But right now, I don't believe, after all these Mustangs we've trained, that tiptoeing around these guys and getting them to trust you first and then trying to deal with bolting later is effective. Um, it's the combination of doing both at the same time, I think, is the most effective. So um, that's just my experience. Um, I've seen horses that have just had no pressure and then... Uh, if anything changes in their life, they completely lose it and bolt off or freak out or they're super nervous and anxious if they're out of anything that's comfort. Uh, and we can't be helicopter parents like that because we cannot stop them from ever having pressure in their lives. Uh, so we like to do gentling and teach them to not bolt right away first off um, and teach them not to strike and kick right away first off. Um, and things like that to keep us safe and so that they're okay with pressure. So you have to be really smart with it. Very ethical, smart use of pressure and stress to teach them how to handle it, I think is the most humane and ethical thing you can do for a horse. So stay tuned for updates on him. I'll probably do some more um, updates on here because he's pretty cool, pretty cool horse. And, and hopefully um, seeing a, a scared horse like this that likes to bolt uh, and watching their progress um, we'll help y'all as you're working with your Mustangs. And just a little shameless plug, um, we do have an extensive video library of training wild horses from like first touch all the way through under saddle safe, safe trail partners um, and loads of case studies on our perpetual training toolbox video library. As far as I know, it's the only one out there that um, trains a significant amount of wild horses that we've videoed. Uh, and training with a wide variety of techniques um, from the very beginning, not just gentling stuff, but all the way to under saddle. And it's the only one that I know of that's out there that's specific to Mustangs. Um, so let you kind of watch you see that I'll work with this guy. I'll stop yapping at you and you can kind of see what he does with um, the stick and stream because he's able to touch his head and his little bit of his neck, but he's not quite okay with his body. So Isidro is going to just desensitize him more with a stick and string and then work closer and closer and closer. Um, you've probably seen him do that before to get him okay with the body. Um, so pretty cool horse. Um, super excited about him. Uh, so far we've gotten three from this HMA that we've been in contact with. And I know the BLM likes them. And if you can find a Roberts Mountain, Nevada, these are, these are pretty cool horses. So um, I would say grab one.